because um, I'm very concerned about the Atlantic City and the Pleasantville area mm -hmm. and getting this information out to the, that that community. Um, so we both know that for some reason, a lot of things I'm finding out in this journey is that the exposure is not in those specific areas. And I have a great passion and a great need to make sure that the, those people in those areas know that there are resources out here, you know? Yes, sir. And with that being said, what um, service could you offer a family in AC? Well, basically, and, and that's a good question, uh, what we do is we, we provide direct services. So um, through our wraparound process, which is how we evaluate those clients that we work with, we get an understanding of what specific goals we want to address and how we want to go about tackling each goal. So in saying that, let's take, for instance, you may have a young man who is just in need of, of companionship, as we say. Uh, there are very few positive real, uh, real role models in his life or her life. And we basically provide an advocate who will go in and be that go-to person for that child and for that family so that as you look at the different aspects of, of what's available in the community, they're able to have someone who can kind of hold their hand and, and really get them there. Um, we also provide behavioral health assistance as well with therapists and, and people that will sit with some of our more complicated young people and help them to address those specific issues that they may be able to function better in school, also in the community, in their homes. Um, so, you know, whatever the, the, the base need is, we have some way to address that need. We have a no reject, eject policy. So anyone who comes through our door will be, receive some service or, or support. That's a great program, Al. If I may, I have a, a question. I mean, you said the wraparound program, or the wraparound process. That sounds great. It reminds me of wrapping your arms around somebody and loving them. And uh, from what you're saying, this is kind of like you put an advocate in somebody's life, like a big brother or a big sister. So if I can ask you, what exactly the wraparound process and that big sister, big brother in our life process I want one now. This is the way you're saying it. It's making me feel like I want to need one. Yeah. So how would I? How how would somebody go directly? I need a big brother in my life. Well, Who do I call? Where's the web? How do I get that it, guy? It, it goes Four back. Guys. It goes back to uh, that old uh, ancient African proverb that it takes a village to raise a child. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and when that. we look at you know the villages of Atlantic City, and we look at the villages of Pleasantville, and even Egg Harbor City, and you know we service young people in Egg Harbor Township, Galloway. Beautiful. There's not a community in this area that we don't have some type of presence in. Uh, and saying that, you know, once again, there are other people, there are other organizations, there are other resources who can also come to the table and assist in meeting those specific goals or, or criteria that have been established to help young people yeah. succeed and, and achieve and to help those families gain the strength that it needs to be the type of resource and support uh, to the lives of young people. So in saying that, um, that wraparound process is probably the, the core fundamental of what helps us to operate because we know as an agency we can't do it by, by sure. ourselves. When sure. you talk about creating a, a, a hub for addiction and, and getting other, you know, knowledgeable, accomplished people to the table and sharing ideas and resources, I mean, that's kind of the future where service is going anyway. Yes. So as we look to do that, you know, we always welcome and challenge our listeners to go to our website, once again, www.yapinc.org, and find out about those specific services that we do offer. And the, the, the wraparound process and detail is also reflected on our website, which gives parents and, and administrators and community stakeholders a better understanding of what it is that we do from an organization standpoint. That is fabulous. Beautiful. Tell me, what do a family, what can they expect once being involved? I mean, they can expect uh, outcomes, and, and, and everything we do is, is goal-driven, is goal-based. So we just don't come into a home for the sake of just providing, in, in the instance of what you're saying, a big brother or a big sister. We, we send our advocates in that home armed with specific tactics in hand so that Beautiful. with those issues that may exist, we will begin you know, nipping at them slowly and, and surely. So in saying that, 
those parents and in, in, in those um, homes that we work with, whether it's a foster home or some type of placement group home, they have an understanding that when we send advocates in, we're sending them armed with the ability to address those specific issues in the lives of those young people to bring out the, the type of outcomes that's going to help make them better. These advocates that you send in, uh, you uh, train them beforehand or uh, just people that want to be involved? And if someone wanted to become involved and become an advocate, exactly what would they do and who would they contact? Uh, well, definitely. We, we are co-certified, meaning we have to meet a certain mandate of, of training and uh, support for our advocates in order for them to do what they need to do to be successful in the community. Um, and we do like to say we recruit within our area code. So Fantastic. if there's a kid within a specific area uh, between myself and, and my director and, and we have another, uh, a couple other key uh, in-office personnel will go out in that community and start, you know, evaluating and, and really, you know, taking an assessment of what type of people live and exist there and who we can approach with the, with, with the prospect of being an advocate for the purpose of helping to connect that young person with someone that they know. Right, that familiar with, that's right. Very familiar yes. with and can be comfortable with. So uh, with that said, you know, our doors is always open for those looking to give back to some young people and families in, in this great community that we serve. So we always ask that you give us a call, 609-345-7333. Once again, that's 609 609- Three four five seven three 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 Youth Advocate Program Office in Atlanta County. I'll tell you, Al. Every time I'm on this show, and this is why I love when Mr. G invites me here, I meet a guest that I'm just flabbergasted over. I just love your process. I, I love what you're selling. I'm buying it. It's just, uh, it's a great process. The we're selling recovery life, and the core of any of my life and most people's is the fundamental. Of, of, of their childhood and their upbringing, and it all starts in the home. And it sounds like you're directly going into the home to, uh, to put resources right at the kitchen table uh, of people that are in the city that we know. And I'll tell you, man, I, I just love hearing these kind of services that are out there. I, I do have a question for you. I mean, uh, the advocate program sounds just like it's just fabulous. I, I, I like to know how somebody becomes an advocate. Like, um, if Mr. G, can we just show up? And I, I'm sure there's a vetting process. And, um, and, if, and I'll, I'll leave you with that. I don't want to hitch with 19 things. I'm, no. I'm all over the place. I'm so excited to have you. And I, I love the service. I'm all over it. Rob, I thank you for once again asking that uh, very important question. And um, as it pertains to, let's say, uh, uh, the, the subject matter of recovery. All right. We've had a lot of advocates who have come out of that recovery life and have been tremendous in the life of our young people. So they're part of the so process. So when, when you think about what do we look for in way of an advocate, strangely enough, it wouldn't be to the corporate model of what a lot of people would think. Someone who's educated, someone who, you know, is, is, is established. I mean, we do have those type of people. We have the teachers and we have the businessmen and, and the business professionals. But we also have a great core of people who come from everyday life and who have also lost, they, they, they have gained, they, you know, have been strung out and, and, and have been cleaned up and really have a lot to contribute to our young people who are going through some of the similar things. You know, so, that's beautiful. I, I, I like the way you put that. Uh, but I also understand that um, because there's always a coalition, the coalition works best. We have different levels of coalition. And from what you are saying to me, um, it inspires me even more because you, you're showing me, you're giving me a description of, of you being involved hands-on. Exactly. You know, hands-on, you know. And it, it's, it's personal when you're dealing with individuals in addiction or distressed or have a problem that they don't don't know their solution to or don't know the direction or have a purpose to continue to live life on life terms. It's important that people such as ourselves get out there and let them know that they can. You know, that's where the hands-on comes in at. Right. Um, I also um, was one of those victims, you know. I was one of those victims. Self-imposed imprisonment mm -hmm. is how I would describe it today. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I didn't see it that way. I felt as though I felt short of the mark. And there was nobody to help me to get up. But I come to find out, because people such as yourself, that there is a way out. 
And exactly. I, I, I try to keep this in the atmosphere at all times. There's more people willing to help you and be a part of a success story than to destroy you. Right. I agree. I was once my most biggest enemy, you know. And I look at that thing today, and I examine myself. Uh, there's, there's a process that we do, and you may be familiar with it. It talks about taking a personal inventory of yourself, you know. And when you take a personal inventory, you don't know that language until you get involved in that setting. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So you can't identify or re to relate with what's going on with anybody if you haven't really been there. Exactly. So, But we work as hand in glove, it's in spite of, but because we see the greater purpose and the greater need. Yes. yes. Before we go to uh, to one of our paid uh, advertisements for, for Crossroads, I wanted to ask you one quick more one more quick question, if I can, Al. I mean, I I go to some twelve step programs, and you hear people tell stories about kind of their situation in life and what brought them there. If you would, obviously, without giving anybody's anonymity away, can you tell us one of the stories? that you've come across with helping a youth? Because sometimes when people hear a real-life subject story, Joe was doing this, mm -hmm. Joe got this from Al, and this is where Joe's at today, and this is how I helped him. It really helps somebody connect with the process. You understand it, yes. And, uh, and, you know, you, you, exactly, Mr. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll share it, a personal story because I was also an advocate before I became an executive with the company. So I was in the field um, working hands-on with, with young people and families, and one of my first clients was a 16-year-old who was already um, uh, addicted to crack cocaine, and he was also doing um, uh, a PSP. Um, so with what, what that, is PSP? What is that? Um, was it the psychohallucinogenic? Um, so he was out there. He, was out, he was out there. Yeah. He was out there. <laughs> they call it. I guess they call it speed or, or something to that that okay. nature. Um, so and with that. You know, this was a young man who I would be up 2 o'clock in the morning easily pulling him out of crack houses mm. and uh, getting him off the street because his mother, God bless you. His God mother bless you. would call me and, and, you know, basically say, hey, you know, he's out again. He's been home two days or whatever. So I have to go into those type of elements and uh, bring him out. And I remember experience. one morning as he was going into, he would go into these crashes and he was going to a crash one morning. And I, I came in and I had an insurance policy in my hand and I gave it to the mom and I said, you know, what I want you to do is fill this out and put his name on it. We're going to bring him out and, and have a conversation with him. Um, and he came out and we sat him at the table and I said, listen, man, this is a life insurance. Uh, at this point in time, we've done just about everything that we could possibly do. So why leave your family troubled? With that's the, real, with the reality stuff, of having yeah, to bury yeah, you in, 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 in the course that you're going right now. And I mean, that was a, an emotional breakthrough for this kid because he never assembled the, the, the thought of his action in, in, in the contemplation of death and how that would impact his family. Sure. Yeah, Al, you know something? So, you make me think of my mother. You know, uh, my mother took a policy out on me. Uh, I was in addiction for 44 years, mm -hmm. and she always had this policy out on me, yes. you know? And I was thinking that maybe one day I, I get the policy <laughs> and, and spend the money. No, you don't but I didn't understand. Your own I didn't, I'm going to catch my own policy here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's the way we think. Right. That's the way we think. Right. That's what any mind altering drug does do to you. Right. It makes you think outside of the realm of reality. Right. So right. you're telling the story to a young man and, and his mother, and you're giving his mother that insurance policy on his life. Um, what was the outcome of that? How was Basically, that child doing today? I mean, he, he, he went through still some, some struggles. Uh, you know, fortunately, he's alive above ground. He, he has kids now. God bless um, him. He did have to go back into the institution a couple of times, but he always says he remembers. That, that moment, you know, that was a defining moment because, once again, as a young person, you're really not thinking that way. That's right. Absolutely. Um, so in saying that, you know, th that, that is some exposure to, to the population that we're speaking of. And, you know, hopefully uh, we, we continue to do what we can in way of helping keep these young people off of drugs, That's off exactly the streets, right. out of the institutions, and doing more pr productive things with their lives. That's the purpose. This is, this is radio, so i got to tell you, I can see, Al, by the look on your face, which not everybody can see, the enthusiasm and the, satis the satisfaction that you got from helping this gentleman. Beautiful. I can just see it, it comes right through you. And that, that's, that's, that's what this is that's all about, about putting Definitely. the resources out there. One more time, I'm just going to give you who we are. We're www 
dot recovery life radio dot com and we're going to have al's resources with a, a bunch of other resources hub on this website to let you know if you do need some help and you do need uh the resources that are out there we're trying to kind of hub it together i've been using the word google for recovery you know when you're looking for something especially when you're in addiction you know, you're not clear-headed. It's not so easy to find. We're right. trying to make it a little easier for you to find and put it out there. Mr. G, take us away, my man. Yes, my listen, listen audience, we'll be right back with you. We're going to take a little commercial break. We'll be back with you. Hang in there. We have some more information with Al. Thank you so much, Al, for being here. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Know someone with a drug problem? Do you feel as if you are alone and there is no solution to your problem? There is help for you. Tune in to Recovery Life Radio with Mr. G every Thursday at 1030 a.m. Right here on Gospel 88.7 FM, WEHA. Imagine all the stress and burnout you feel were replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there, a peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. No Imagine with a drug all problem? Do you feel as if you are alone and there is no solution to your problem? There is help for you. Tune in to Recovery Life Radio with Mr. G every Thursday at 1030 a.m. Right here on Gospel 88.7 FM, WEHA. Imagine all the stress and burnout you feel were replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there, a peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. Once again, you're back with Mr. G. I'm your recovery broker. Um, Just before we left the air, we was talking to Al. Al, just before we say that, I'd like to thank Crossroads for inviting you in as a guest. Appreciate uh, that. Connecting us together. Um, They are very intimate in the purpose in which we are trying to reach out to the surrounding community. Just people helping people, Al. Yes, sir. And I see the compassion that you really display in here. Uh, You know, I somewhat, I need to be exposed to people such as yourself. Because it gives me even more purpose and direction. You know, um, Rob, I want you to... um, Tell our listeners on the audience that they would like to be a part of our... Absolutely, Mr. G. I'll take it from there. Again, we're here with Al Thomas from YAP, and he's a youth advocate program, and it's just a great program we're talking about. As Mr. G just told you, we have our own advocate in Crossroads. They've been on our show multiple times, and they're giving us some support to our show. If you would like to donate to our show, you can send a check or money order to Deliverance of Truth, P.O. Box 51, and that's in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This donation information will also be on our website, along with all of our resources. And I want to take Mr. G back to Yap and thank uh, Crossroads once again for for bringing all these great guests to us. Take it away, Mr. G. Yes, Al, once again, thank you so much, Rob. Al, um, from your description of what you guys do and what you're involved in, tell me a little something about the quality in which you differ in your approach as advocate? Um, When you deal with the youth advocate program, um, and I don't like to use the term uh, or or in the acknowledgement of better than anybody else, uh, because everybody has uh, a significant contribution that they're making to this cause. That's correct. Uh, But we really concentrate on going into homes in very diverse communities, even in, in, in some hostile communities. Uh, like I said, we have a no reject eject policy. So if one of our referring agents sends us a client, that client will be served no matter where they are. Uh, 
Stanley Homes Village, back Merlin, some uh, um, RV communities out in the deepest part of the county that you would not know of and would not want to be a part of. Not smack <laughs> So uh, our advocates literally go um, to, to some very uh, extreme environments. Beautiful. Uh, to provide the service that we provide and, and, and are there regular. So once again, when I was an advocate uh, at the time, we had an area called the Virginia Avenue courts, which is not there in Atlantic city anymore. That's correct. Um, and, you know, I would go in there, and, and I'm not just picking up the kid that I'm there to service. I'm picking up additional kids there just for the sake of, of building the camaraderie of, hey, we're good guys. We're not police officers. Yeah, we're not here about. to lock up anybody. So if I can grab four more and take them to, you know, the movies or we'll go to the basketball court or, you know, we'll, we'll go to, to, to the field and, and throw the football around or whatever, that's what we do. So I think that would probably be the most distinct nature in, in how we operate, per se, how others operate, because we just are that community-oriented, that community-friendly. You sound like you're just more hands-on, you know. You know, it, 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 it takes a certain character to go out into the community in which it's so infested, because we know our kids today has been so exposed to so many other elements, man, that deter their futures and steal their dreams and their desires and drain them of their strength, their natural ability to achieve. Yeah. Um, to where it actually decreases their the possibility in their own mind that they cannot ob- obtain anything. Right. You because know, you know, I know from my own experience that once a child falls into become victimized because of whatever substance alt mind or substance he's using, it takes away from who he is. Right. And finding your way back is a very difficult task for so many of us. Exactly. You know? For some they get it fast. For others it may take years, such as myself. It took years for me to reach this this pebble to in my life. You know what I mean? This right. is not an overnight a quick fix. Right. So having people in the community that can identify and relate to where these children are really at it's a vital part. Right. It's a vital part. Well, it's, it's also a nature of un- unconditional love. I mean, when you think about, about God and, and how he loves us, uh, we, we have to train ourselves to love others in return in the same way. Yes, sir. So um, with some of my young people, I had a, a young man one time, 16. He was a pimp. And uh, his girls were an pimp, average huh? age of uh, 25 to 32. These were adult women. Wow. Um, and his issue was he wouldn't come home. He was mandated to be home. He should have been home, but he had women that had three of their own homes. And each home had everything that he needed from, you know, the PlayStation to, you know, these girls was feeding him, so on and so on. So how do you get a young person like that to identify with the fact that, you know what, you may be a a, a little... Way too far out there, <laughs> and where you should be right now. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> and um, I mean, the strategy was just love. You know, we, we would sit down, we would go out and eat, we'd have conversations, and those conversations would be deep. And it's like, look, man, you know, until you turn a certain age, you can't yes. be out here just doing what you want to do. And he never saw anything as illegal because his thing was, I'm just managing. Exactly. I'm right. not out there doing the act. An illusion. I, I, yes. I'm not, you know, attacking these That's women. Right. You know, these are women who love me. They, they're Absolutely. doing what they want to do and, an and I'm helping them in return. Yes. So breaking down it, that illusion was, was something that was, 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 um, key into the success of working with this young man. And we started, you know, going to church and, um, you know, just opening his mind to a different way of doing yes. things, not so much judging That's and right. pointing the finger, but showing him a different type of life that Beautiful. a 16-year-old could live. Because at the end of the day, it's still stressful. Yes. You know, you, you're, sure. you're taking on what you consider a management position, but you're managing other people in other a very dangerous, lives. hostile environment. Yes. So with that said, it's also very illegal. So in saying that, you know, showing him a different lifestyle, a different way, you know, that once again summarizes what we do from the youth advocate side is really just getting into the lives of these young people and loving them unconditionally, not judging, you know, not not trying to, you know, change them, like you say, overnight. But we know we're in it for the long haul and and we take it step by step. Literally, that's what's really needed. You know, I was thinking as you was talking, um. I come from a very large family, but they could never help me because I could never hear them. 
it took someone other than them because exactly. see, they, see because they wasn't in their addiction they didn't understand what addiction truly was exactly so although they was giving me sound and good information they didn't understand the trouble that I was truly in. Exactly. You see, but when, when people such as ourselves who have the experience and we go back into these communities and we grab hold to our young children and even the seniors because they want a way out too, I have been convinced not many people want to be in the condition that they're in. Right. And we have to be a community that show compassion and use a powerful word when you show love. Right. If I can just love you enough, because see, I know what happened to me. Somebody began to show me some love. Right. And genuinely being concerned about what I was doing in my welfare. And that changed my mindset. Right. Because under the disease, you think everybody's against you. Right. Nobody understands me. That's what the disease does. Right. Plays on the mind, centers in the mind of an individual. Right. You know what I mean? And we want to reach out to our community and, and let children know that they, you can regain your strength. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can go back to college. You can still play sports. You can still do whatever your passion was yes. before you picked up that first drug or that first drink. That's what we want to recapture. Yes. We want to give them that same vision that they once had, mm -hmm. letting them know that they can make it, and there is a way out. Mr. G, I, I love that, and I love Al's no-reject, no-eject uh, yeah. policy program. I'll tell you, part of our mantra, if you will, is that lost, scared, embarrassed, alone, is, is where a lot of people that find themselves in addiction or in a dangerous pr process of life, they feel alone. They feel like there's no one else out there. And as you're pointing out, is some key elements. Listen, our kids are marketed to all day long. All day. They have a phone in their pocket. There's social media. There's liquor advertisements. There's the average guy selling whatever he's selling on the corner. There's the average person as the young man telling you how you can make money with your body. They are marketed to all day long. That's right. And without a program like YAP that is just a what, – what a, it's, again, it's my privilege to meet you today and know that this program exists. Because unless you can get into that community and into that house and market to these children and more or less take the place or at least be in competition with the negative input that comes into all of our lives, kids and adults. Listen, I'm 44 years old. I mean, uh, we all have our own path, but I found myself uh, matriculating into a problem that, you know, one day in my life or once upon a time was acceptable. Mm -hmm. And that acceptability veered off into an unacceptable level. A nightmare. A nightmare. And until you know, and, and because I was marketed to, and, and it's, there's, a, there's a, a camaraderie of, of criminals mm -hmm. that, all, that all get together. And unless you can form a camaraderie of good people and a coalition. That's the combat against it. Absolutely, Mr. G. And I think that's what we're talking about here today. It's, yes. just, uh, it's just you have to have uh, a resource or a counterbalance to the negative yin and yang to get you into a positive. And that's what I hear. That's what I hear today, Alan. And, again, it is my privilege. It is my privilege. Mine's as well, sir. So, Mr. G, without further ado, again, we are coming to you on www.recoveryliferadio.com. All the guests you've heard here today and in the weeks past, their information, contact, website information, and phone numbers will be available to you on our website. Again, Mr. Mr. Thomas, Al Thomas, is coming to you from YAP, www.yapinc.org, and his phone number is 609-345-7333. If you have a troubled teen or a person that needs help, this is the man to call. This, this is, the, is man. the man to call. Yes, thank you so much. Listen, what we're going to do, Al, we want to take a little short break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to let Al expand on what else do we have to share with our listeners? In all those countries. <laughs> yeah, in all the countries he's in. That's good, bro. Thank you. We'll be right back with you.
Know someone with a drug problem? Do you feel as if you are alone and there is no solution to your problem? There is help for you. Tune in to Recovery Life Radio with Mr. G every Thursday at 1030 a.m. Right here on Gospel 88.7 FM, WEHA. Now this next song is for anybody who's ever had an obstacle. In all the stress and burnout you feel. We're replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there. A peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. Imagine all the stress and burnout you feel. We're replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there. A peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. Imagine all the stress and burnout you feel. We're replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there. A peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. You're back with Mr. G on Recovery Life Radio. Sharing our experience, strength, and hope. Helping one youth, one at a time. Our mission and goal is to help our surrounding community and provide them with the information and the resources that can possibly change your life. We'd like to thank Behavior Crossroads for being a sponsor of this segment. I'm so grateful for that. We're going to go back to our guest, Al. Al, I tell you, man, you really have my spirit rising. <laughs> um, share with us some other things when you use organization, the term of an organization. Um, exactly what does the organization consist of and who are you associated with? Uh, we are a part of uh, various partnerships throughout this community, Um I and, and, and my uh, director, Lamont Fauntleroy, we actually sit as uh, appointed members to the Youth Service Commission by the county executive, um, where we are able to work with the prosecutor's office, uh, the assistant prosecutor, the sheriff, um, the county jail, as well as other members in the community from FSA. Uh, to the shelter, to the Juvenile Justice Commission, um, so on and so on. So we have a regular monthly meeting where we uh, present those issues that are affecting our young people in this community and come up with sound strategies on how we're going to approach bringing about a resolve. Uh, And it is a very important work. And I think, uh, you know, the county executive, uh, Dennis Everson, needs to be acknowledged for uh, that specific committee. Uh, that exists in our community, which is different than a lot of communities. Which committee is that, Al? The Youth Service Commission. The Youth Service Commission. So and, it's and a coalition of... It's a coalition of people, agencies, beautiful. community leaders, services specific to the cause of improving the lives of children oh, in it. Atlantic County. And, and you are, again, Al, your yap. Can you, just for our radio listeners who may have just tuned in... Can you just give us a, a, quick, a quick plug on what YAP is? The Youth Advocate Program, once again, is a uh, community-based program. We provide in-home services, uh, community linkages, as well as behavioral uh, assistance. Uh, we also provide supported work, which gives young people and their families the opportunity to go out into the workforce and uh, prepare through job readiness training and things of that nature. Uh, We have fatherhood programs. We uh, do um, education programs, and we also provide life skills. That's great. And, again, 
Al is with Yap, www.yapinc.org. And you can find all the information on this program today on our website, www.recoveryliferadio.com. So don't worry about missing anything. You'll be able to catch it up. And as Ken Gandy was telling you, Mr. G, that this program is being sponsored by Crossroads, Crossroads, I'm sorry, Behavioral Health. And if anybody else would like to put a donation into this program to keep it on the air, you can send all donations, check or money orders, to Deliverance of Faith. Truth. Deliverance of Truth. I'm sorry. They'll take it faith or truth, I'm sure. And that's <laughs> P.O. Box 51. And that's Atlantic City, New Jersey. Only Robert. Only Robert. <laughs> you, can, you, you can just send it to thank you <laughs> at P.O. Box. <laughs> we'll, we'll cash that check. Don't worry. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Rob. I tell you, you always got some humor on your chest, man. I love you for that. Um, Al, you know, um, I've read your profile somewhat, and I noticed one thing about you that stood out to me. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you spoke briefly on it without describing what you do. Mm-hmm. You was just newly elected to Atlantic City Board of Education. Yes. That means that you are in the school system involved with children. Very much so. Well, you know, tell us a little something about that experience and how did you get there? Um, basically, you know, just being approached by some concerned citizens in the community who, who wanted to ensure that the life of their children from the education side would be preserved and uh, in, in many cases enhanced. And wanted to, I guess, see some new young energy <laughs> bringing some creative ideas I to the it. table. I love it. Uh, yeah, much. So it, it was an uh, interesting uh, race and, and process. Um, I, I learned a lot through it, and, and I am continuing to learn, you know, even as we speak. Uh, with the different trainings and, and things that I'm involved in, not just on the uh, city level, but I'm also getting more involved on the county level uh, with our local county school board association Beautiful. as well as uh, on the state level through the uh, New Jersey School Board Association. So in, in doing all of those things, uh, it just helps me to do even more to help bring about uh, a sense, as you were saying, hope. Uh, for our young people to know that they can do it. I mean, I'm a kid from the projects of Atlantic City. Um, you know, I'm not, not a, I'm not ashamed to say, you That's know, right. I hadn't. I went to college, but I didn't graduate college. That's all right, bro. Um, and, and I made my share of mistakes. You know, I, I ran these streets like everybody else, um, and, and yet I, I had to make a sound decision on the fact that that was not a, a winning situation. What was going to allow me to win was having a, a true investment in my community and being the type of citizen Beautiful. that that God has uh, you know raised us all to be. Yes. Um, in, in the same way of being a servant. So. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll tell you, I love what YAP stands for. I love the story you told about one of the kids that you helped in the streets. And, um, you know, you're like single-handedly helping the community all by yourself. You're, you're the school board, you're YAP, you're the youth advocate program. And I know you have other resources that are helping you. Um, in our pre-interview, we talked about the DIFUS program and some other programs that kind of all unite together. Because, as Mr. G said, um, there's more resources than people know. Right. And you're not alone. And I know people exactly. feel like they're alone. Can you just – I know we keep hitting you with all these questions, but can you describe how they kind of, uh, lack of a better word, triangulate or how the, the coalition works and right. how they're, they're, they're all in it together? Well, no, I really appreciate the, the time that you guys are giving because I think it is important that people know and understand that there are many out here working on the behalf of our young people and families. Uh, I mean, even when you look at the magnitude of the station – being a shining representation to the community that people can come together and work together for the cause of disseminating positive information, which there's uh, very few factors of in in our society today. So if it's not reality, if it's not, you know, sex, if it's not race, if it's it's not education, it seems to not get that same type of attention. Uh, But, you know, I'm very honored to be here. And with that, yeah, I mean, we we definitely are, are, are one of those agencies that are very fortunate to have the ability to work with uh, great agencies like uh, DCPNP, which is the, the new form of what we know as DIFUS. Mm-hmm. Um, the Juvenile Justice Commission is a very important aspect of what we do. Um, we also are very involved with the um, Atlantic City Pleasantville Community Engagement Committee, uh, which brings together business people. It brings together the, the public and private sector. It brings together education to, once again, 
form a coalition that meets the mandate of what our young people need for the purpose of ensuring that their lives are as safe as possible. Yeah. Uh, so with, with that, you know, I'm very honored and, and very uh, uh, pleased with what we have here in Atlanta County, which once again is very different than what a lot of, what a lot of other counties have available in way of support and resources to help their young people. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I'll tell you, you know, Mr. I'll be reluctant. I'm sorry. Excuse me for a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. G. I'll be reluctant not to thank Elaine and William Hawks for this platform. Yes, sir. And as you were speaking, I was thinking about, you know, people helping people. The station owners right here at WEHH 88.7 and 99.9 has given me, it's also been a part of my success story here, mm-hmm. where I can bring people together to hub, as Rob would say, a variety and a large scope of information that people do know that there are resources out here, you know. And who would have thought that I would be sitting here, of course, from someone like yourself out today? See, this is what we want people to know, that you re- can regain. There is people to help you. Right. To bring you to where you truly need to be. I love the very fact that I've seen the spirituality come out of you as well. That you recognize that there's a God, a power greater than ourselves that make things happen. Exactly. You know, you talked about, you know, your transformative life. You know, you, your values change. You know, somebody was a part of that. Well, that's where we come in. And we we are a part of helping someone else, especially the youth. I have to stay on the youth because I, 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 see, I see a great need. When I walk down Atlanta Avenue and when I ride through Pleasantville and I see kids hanging on street corners all day, that affects me. Right. Because you were I, one of those I, kids. I, yeah, I was one of those kids. And I know what it really leads to. You know, but I know what it is to be in a dark place, man. And listen, man, and some people don't come out of that thing, man. We have kids dying. Absolutely. Right. We have Shit. kids dying. Shit. We have kids spending life bids in prisons 20 years. Yeah. I mean, come on, they're getting football numbers 60 years. Yeah. I mean, come on, we have to step in. And I love the very fact that you're so involved and you're so compassionate about that. You know, I wish I met you back in the day. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing you didn't. <laughs> hey, listen, I know there was, was some out there trying to bring me along my way. They were trying to help me, man. I ain't going to lie to you. Right? you know what I'm saying? Right, right, but right. thank God that we're here today and we're here to share our experience, strength, and hope. What would you add to that, Rob? Absolutely. As you said, there was people trying to help you along the way. And that's what we're trying to do, help people by, again, hubbing together the resources. And I'll tell you, YAP is absolutely a great program. And we had some guests, I mean, just in this short four-week period, we had Fred Granice from the Atlantic City Police Explorers. Oh, my God. Never, Fire. Never heard of it before. What a great program, yes. a similar well, it's, program. It's funny because uh, I used to be an executive with the Boy Scouts of America, and that is one of the first programs that I had in Atlantic City. Uh, when I came on board, there were only two scouting programs in the city, which the Explorer program was one. And we had another uh, Cub Scout program at St. James AME. And when I left scouting, we probably had about 36 different scouting programs in Atlantic City, serving Beautiful. about 1,000 youth. Um, so, you know, just to kind of hear that name reside. Uh, he, he, he was, he was a, a great thing. guest. And again, a fireball. until I was part of this process, which is, that's what scares me. It seems like you get the resources when you get the process, and it would be great to have those resources available. Again, I'm just going to give a shout-out. We had Kim Burns, and she was the head of the tobacco. I don't know if she was the head, so let me, let me rephrase. But she was involved with the tobacco and free health for uh, Atlantic Prevention Services. We always have our, a, a representative, except for this the first week, from Crossroads Behavioral Health. Health. We've had Jordan Trainer, and we've had both Mike DeMarco on multiple times. And then we also had on, we had Lori from, she's also from Behavioral Health. And there, again, I'm just putting together a correlation of just in the short four weeks, how many resources we've literally stumbled upon, because we're not the smartest guys, Mr. Very, G and I. Very, <laughs> very dull but we bring smart, toolbox. we bring some smart cats like Al here yeah, man. that has, he has the information. I mean, if you know somebody, unfortunately, the person that's under addiction does not usually get the message the way they should. But if you know somebody, you can bring these resources to them. And, and and help bring them out of that that as Mr. Gandhi says uh, that lash of addiction. So, uh, you know they're here, they're out there, they're out there for you. And we have them all hubbed together at www.recoveryliferadio.com. Yes, thank you for that. We also would like to reach out to any organization, franchise out there that is trying to reach out to the community. Feel free to call us on our website. Rob, give that website again. That is www. 
www.recoveryliferadio.com. And Mr. G, give me your number because I want you to tell them about that call we got this week where you took your phone call, and uh, I, I directed it to Mr. G. Yeah, that was a beautiful experience. And he helped the lady. I think he helped her get in touch with the rehab or some kind of beautiful experience. some kind of, some kind of recovery uh, program. Mr. G, do you well, mind if I give them your cell phone directly? No, sir. Give it to them. That's 609-431-3007. And Mr. G is a true advocate. You give him a call. You just want to rap with somebody. You want to get some resources. He's your guy. He's your guy. Listen, I thank you for that very much. You know, there's a young lady. She was just crying out. And um, names are irrelevant here. The purpose is bigger than the name, even my own. She was crying out for help the other day. And Rob directed her to me. And I was, I, would, I was able to help her get into the necessary facility for the proper treatment. You know, she had had a problem getting in. And I called the facility and I told them exactly what our purpose was to get this young lady some help. And they arranged for her to come in the following morning at 11 a.m. See, that's what we do. Absolutely. That's what we do. Yes, we're and the voice for the silent. That's for our those purpose. that can't speak for themselves, we're that voice. Yes, and they sir. say if you help one person, would you help that one person just yesterday? So we're helping more than one person. This is working in a short period of time. Yeah, and we, want you, you, and we want you to know if you are one of those people that having a problem with getting to a facility, we want you to contact us. WWW. Let us reach out for you. RecoveryLifeRadio.com. Yes, and my name is Mr. G. Listen, we're going to be back in the next 30 seconds with Al's closing remarks. Thank you so much. Know someone with a drug problem? Do you feel as if you are alone and there is no solution to your problem? There is help for you. Tune in to Recovery Life Radio with Mr. G every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Right here on Gospel 88.7 FM, WEHA. Imagine all the stress and burnout you feel were replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there, a peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. Imagine all the stress and burnout you feel were replaced with natural, reliable peace and calm. Imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness. Now imagine how you get there, a peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again. Behavioral Crossroads Outpatient Detox. Call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com. You're back with Mr. G, Recovery Broker. Thanks for listening to the program today. Listen, we're about ready to come to the end of the program. Well, we're going to let Mr. Al Thomas share a little more information with us. Whatever it is that you think that um, you would like to cover on the air to give, the infam- to give um, our listeners a little more insight on purpose. Yeah, I mean, once again, I, I really thank you guys, uh, Mr. G and Rob, for taking your time out and providing this service to the community through the airways uh, and also thanking uh, Deacon Hawks for uh, his due diligence in ensuring that the people of this community would have a voice and the opportunity to express those things that are necessary for all of us to be able to work together and, and show our love and appreciation for one another. Uh, as it pertains to, you know, closing thoughts, it, it's a resounding nature of knowing that we as people have the ability to impact the lives of one another, and all we have to be is willing to do so. Um, I always say this, I said this in, in, in the article that I sent to you guys, uh, you talk about wanting to get involved with the lives of young people, but you got to understand that they are people. Yes, so they, they, they may, you know, cuss around you, they may even cuss at you. That's right. You know, they, they may have a tendency to, to take things that don't belong to them. Um, you know, they may have a tendency to do things that are kind of abnormal to how you were raised and, and the things that you would do. Yes. But it does not mean that they're not worth your time and That's consideration. Correct. And, so well, and the longer you, you, you involve yourself, the better they will become. 
Trust me. Good they witness. do That's become right. they better do people. <laughs> uh, so all you need to do is just kind of get your feet wet, you know, find a, a place of commonality, uh, whether it be crocheting, whether it be chess, whether it be reading or, or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, you, you, you'll be able to be a, a person who makes an impact on the life of a young person. Al, beautifully put. Al, I want to just thank you once again for being here today as a guest. Uh, truly, I know that our listeners had got a great deal of information and resources. Okay, Rob, how would you like to close us out? I'm getting my cue from Mr. G, so I'm going to tell you where we're coming from. We are coming at you from www.recoveryliferadio.com. We had Crossroads send Al Thomas from Yap. All the information for him will be on the website. And Crossroads supported this show today. And if you'd like to support the show, you can send any donations in to Deliverance of Truth. That's P.O. Box 51, Atlantic City, New Jersey, 08401. That donation information and all the information you heard here today will be at www.recoveryliferadio.com. Mr. G, take us home. Once again, you've been listening to Mr. G right here on the Station of Information. Listen, we're looking for our audience to come back next week, but we have some other guests with a lot of information. You need to stay tuned to this program. What time is that, Mr. Uh, G? It will be 1030 on, from 1030 to 1130 every, every Thursday. Thursday. Every Thursday. Put that on your calendar. Mark it out with Mr. G. Listen, have a good day and a blessed day. Help somebody find their way. We are people helping people on the station of information. Thank you. the stress and burnout you feel were replaced with natural reliable peace and calm imagine you could trade in the pill that gets you through your day for real wellness now imagine how you get there a peaceful place where individualized treatment and professional care help you feel like yourself again behavioral crossroads outpatient detox call us at 877-645-2502 or behavioralcrossroads.com know someone with a drug problem do you feel as if you are alone and there is no solution to your problem there is help for you tune in to recovery life radio with mr g every